Hello, welcome to my channel. We are reading Creation Cries Out, the Maseroth, and we are reading in chapter 3. I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 2. Let's get started. Yahuwah created and named the stars and stretched them out like a heavenly scroll. See the scroll right here? Chapter 2, Yahuwah created and named the stars, Matthew 11.25 At the time Yeshua answered and said, thank, I thank you, O Father, King of Heaven, Strong's H8064, Shamian, the place where the stars are located, i.e. the Maserat, Zodiac, and the earth, because you have hid these things, secrets preserved in the stars, heaven, from the wise and prudent, and have revealed them unto babies. I realize when we have to come to view the zodiac in a negative light, as as a tool used only in the hands of witches performing magic or stargazers, attempting to predicting the future using the perverted means of astrology, we associate the zodiac with the hocus pocus in the daily newspaper horoscopes. However, the Bible declares that Yahuwah named the stars and established them for signs and seasons. The zodiac is simply a tool that illustrates this fact, as we will see, so we need to uh, tread lightly when it comes to the zodiac and not deny the glory Yahuwah declares is his. The wise men in Babylon knew this 2,000 years ago. That is how the Magi discerned the time and place of the Messiah's birth. It was foretold in the heavens, a sign in the zodiac. Abraham knew this as Yahuwah witnessed the gospel and advanced to Abraham. By the stars in heaven speaking directly of the zodiac, as we will find out, David knew this well, expressing in Psalms 19 of the glorious message found in the zodiac. Enoch, the scribe of righteousness, taken to heaven by Yahuwah, also knew this, and so did the angels. The book of Enoch, chapter 9, verse 6. Things and nothing can hide itself from thee. Thou seest what Azazel hath done, who hath taught all in righteousness on earth, and revealed that the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which seven men were striving to learn. And finally, it was the angels who perverted this message, leaving mankind swinging back and forth as on a pendulum from misusing the stars and astrology for fortune telling, magic, and sorcery, to the other end of the spectrum, denying the very existence of a creator through science. The message found in the heavens eludes us today in astronomy. As we study the very creation that literally cries out his existence while denying there is a creator, Enoch tells us there are actually eternal secrets preserved in heaven the men were striving to learn, just like we are today, and that angels fell from the grace of Yahuwah in order to pervert, pervert that message proclaimed by the creator. Let's go back and reestablish that message. Once we reestablish that message, then we can literally reconcile the information passed down across cultures over thousands of years as every culture in effect is saying the same thing. We just stop listening. Yahuwah is the author of the Zodiac. We see clearly stated in the Bible that it was Yahuwah who is the author of the Zodiac, the path of the sun through the constellation. Not Satan or the fallen angels or aliens, not the Sumerians with their sun gods, nor the Greeks with their Olympus, and not the Romans with their pantheon. They simply perverted this message from Yahuwah. We also know that there, are, there is a divine message found within the Zodiac that tells the glory of Yahuwah and cries out the works of his hand. We see below that it was Yahuwah who named every star. Psalm 147, 1-5 How good is it to sing praises to our Elohim! How pleasant and fitting to praise him! Yahuwah builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the exiles from Israel, he heals the brokenhearted, and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars, and calls them each by name. Great is our Elohim, and mighty in the power, his understanding has no limit. Before I continue any further, allow me to divine, define what the English word heaven actually means. The word helianized in the English as heaven is Strong's H8064. Below is the definition. Shamian, what it sounds like. Visible heavens, sky, where the stars, etc. are. 
Judges, Genesis, Deuteronomy, or other examples. Heaven is probably one of the most misunderstood mythical concepts in all of Christianity. That is why I wrote the book, The Kingdom, because heaven and the kingdom of Yahuwah are two very different things. We see above that the primary definition of Shamian, which is translated heaven and sky in English, is the visible sky where the stars are located. It's, it is specifically referring to the zodiac, not some invisible place. Heaven is not some mythical place with flying, <laughs> with angels flying around playing harps where God, some old guy with a long white beard, resides. No, we need to forget all these fairy tales of established religion. They are more fabricated than in mythology. At least mythology is based on real signs in the heavens. Heaven in Hebrew is speaking of the zodiac, or sometimes the heavenly scroll, which is the same thing, the Maserat, the place where the stars reside in the sky. Now that we understand that one word, the scriptures come alive before our very eyes, and the zodiac takes center stage. We see below that it was Yahuwah who created all the stars and starry hosts, which are the constellations, and named both the stars and the constellations. Not some big bang that came out of nowhere. Everything from nothing. Right. Isaiah 40, verse 25 to 26. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One, Yahuwah. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host. Constellations are host of stars. One by one and calls them each constellation by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. There are twelve major constellations, exactly among all cultures. Amazing, isn't it? Isaiah 45, verse 5. I am Yahuwah, and there is no other, no trinity. Apart from me, there is no God. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, Yahuwah, do all these things. It is I who made the earth and created mankind upon it. My own hand stretched out the heavens, signs of the zodiac among the elliptic to reveal a hidden message. I marshaled their starry host, constellations. You notice how you see I, I form the light. I, Yahuwah. It is I, I marshaled. Not, not, there's no trinity in there. There's no tri, triad. It's him, one. Yahuwah is one. Isaiah 44, verse 24. This is what Yahuwah says. Your, your Redeemer who formed you in the womb. I am Yahuwah, the maker of all things, who stretches out the heavens, the signs of the zodiac, along the elliptic to reveal a hidden message, who spreads out the earth by myself. Isaiah 46, verse 5. To whom will you compare me or count me equal? To whom will you liken me that we may be compared? Remember this. Fix it in mind. Take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things? Those of long ago? I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, written in the zodiac, from ancient times, creation. What is still to come, I say, my purpose, defined and written in the stars, will stand. And I will do all things that I please. His will be done on earth, as it is proclaimed in heaven, written in the stars. Isaiah 42, verse 5. This is what Yahuwah says. He who created the heavens, the stars and constellations, the zodiac, and stretched them out in order to proclaim a message, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, of it, who gives breath to his people and life to those who walk on it. In Psalms below, we see that the sun and moon rises and sets daily, night after night. Knowledge concerning the plan of Yahuwah is proclaimed without voice or speech, from one end of the earth to the other, to all mankind. You just have to look up and understand the constellations. Psalm 19. The heavens, the stars and constellations of the zodiac, are telling of the glory of Yahuwah, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. 
There is no speech, nor is there words. Their voice is not heard. Their lying, elliptic plane through which the sun appears to travel when viewed from earth, has gone out through all the earth, and their utterances to the end of the world. In them, the constellations. He has placed a tent for the sun, which the sun is as a shadow metaphor, a bridegroom, the Messiah, coming out of his chamber to run the course of a wedding and marry the bride, Israel. Remnant Israel. It rejoices as a strong man, Messiah, to run his course, plan of salvation. Its rising is from one end of the heavens, and its circuit, that is what the zodiac means, path or circuit, to the other end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. And it's pretty clear right there. David is clearly describing the zodiac, the chart of the sun moving across our skies, and the line of the sun, called the elliptic, that goes throughout all the earth as it runs its course each year throughout the signs of the zodiac called constellations. David properly understood the message contained in the zodiac, as we will learn later in this book. The sun rises from one end of heaven, and then its circuit, or zodiac, is like a bridegroom coming out of the, his chamber. This is fulfilled in Yeshua the Messiah. Yeshua proclaims himself the bridegroom and says, Those who hear his voice speaking of the zodiac rejoice, and it is Yeshua's joy to be the fulfillment of that message. Yes, the zodiac is the original gospel message proclaimed the Messiah, as we will find out later in this book. John 3.29, verse 29. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. Matthew 25, verse 4. The wise ones, however, took oil and jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom, the bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Revelation 19, 9. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of Yahuwah. The marriage supper of the Lamb was first proclaimed in the Zodiac, as we will find out. That is what John was referring to in Revelation 19. The Zodiac contains the true words of Yahuwah. That's pretty clear. In other words, David sees the sun as a prototype for the Messiah. This physical metaphor of the sun as the bridegroom pointing to the Messiah is repeated throughout Scripture. This is, in fact, true as the sun was created as a witness of the coming Messiah and what the Messiah would do. This striking declaration in Psalms 19 clearly tells us that Yahuwah built into the Zodiac the story of redemption. And through the stars, he has been witnessing his plan to all humanity in a unique view only from earth. Later in this book, we will learn that that message of the Zodiac is that of the bridegroom who redeems his bride. Ever heard this preach at a uh, church? God's Son, a metaphor for God's Son. God's Son, S-U-N, a metaphor for God's Son, S-O-N. Yes, you who is Son the shining sun in our solar system is a prophetic prototype of Yahuwah's firstborn son. Firstborn from resurrection, not firstborn on earth. Firstborn holy, that's what that means. The son of God is the light of the world as a physical metaphor of the son of God as the light of the world. Spiritually, the son of God saves humanity from the physical darkness, bringing life, giving light to plants our food, to our eyes. This, too, is a physical metaphor of the Son of God who saves humanity from spiritual darkness. Bringing the light of spiritual life, the center of the Enoch Zodiac is the throne of Yeshua, which is pictured on two wheels because of the sun appears to move throughout the sky. See the throne to the right on two wheels. Then you see the four angels, or the four uh, creatures that are seen. At the top, you see the seven spirits of Yahuwah, and then Yeshua in the middle. The prophets Enoch, Ezekiel, Daniel, and John all describe the center of the zodiac in great detail 
with two sets of living creatures, two sets of four living creatures, sorry, four wheels with the wheel, a rainbow throne, and 24 stars, elders, falling at the feet of the one who sits on the throne. I will cover these prophecies in great detail later in this book and series. The Greeks then took the zodiac given to Enoch and perverted the center of the zodiac into mythology, re-envisioned the entire zodiac into a Greek-appropriate zodiac, and the image in the center of the zodiac as a Helios riding his sun chariot. The signs of the zodiac were twisted into Greek gods and idolized just like the Babylonians and Sumerians before them had done. The image on the left is the Enoch zodiac, and the one on the right is the Greek zodiac. The image on the left is a pictograph of the plan of salvation, and the one on the right is idolatry. Simply amazing. Yahuwah is genius. As you can see right here, you see the scroll, the heavenly scroll. Later, Constantine would do the same thing and turn the twelve disciples into gods, to whom his new religion would pray to, and simply associated the twelve disciples with, with the pagan gods of the Zodiac and Pantheon. They were later assigned to saints. In an act of idolatry by Christianity, Greeks co Greek coins were inscribed to this sun god, murals dedicated to him, and so forth. The Romans then re-envisioned Helios into Apollo, then Constantine merged all the pagan godmen into Jesus. Today, when we think of the zodiac, images of pagan god worship given to us by the Greeks come to mind. You do not understand the origin or message of the true zodiac given to Enoch by Yahuwah. You will understand completely by the time you finish this book. Those who are not guided by the spirit of Yahuwah and view the zodiac literally have elevated the sun as God, instead of seeing it as a metaphor, the source of sun worship. It's exactly what has happened. We worship Jesus as God. The throne of Yahuwah in the heavenly scroll was changed to the chariot of Helios, the sun god, by the Greeks. They also changed the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, to Sunday. The plan of salvation laid out in the heavenly scroll. If we are ever going to fully comprehend the scriptures, the prophets, and the Nazarene, which means branch, we must understand the plan of salvation, what that plan of salvation is. That plan was first written into the stars at creation, called the heavenly scroll. Yahuwah used the heavenly scroll to witness the plan of salvation to his prophets, and it was further defined in the feast cycle, which is an annual celebration of the heavenly wedding. The feast cycle is the narrow gate that we must walk as a bride, making ready for her groom. We are being misled and not taught the true meaning of these things and being brought back into the immaturity of the letter following rabbit, rabbit, rabbinical Judaism, which does not keep the feast properly out of ignorance of the heavenly scroll. In fact, by following rabbinical Judaism, we are literally keeping pagan rituals and breaking the law. For more information on the feast cycle and the narrow gate, please read my book, The Narrow Gate, free on my website and available on Amazon. In all of our attempts to be obedient to the letter of the law, we again fail our Father in spiritual intent. We remain addicted to milk, lacking teeth to digest the meteor matters of what the feast cycle was, des was designed to teach us and what Yeshua's role is in that plan as the Nazarene or branch. The plan of salvation was foretold in the heavenly scroll, fulfilled in the Yushe covenant, Hebrews 5. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers of the intent of the law, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of Yahuwah's word all over again. You need milk, the letter, not solid food. Milk it means you're a baby. Spiritual intent, the law, is spiritually appraised. 1 Corinthians 2.14 As I will demonstrate, the elementary truths of Yahuwah's word is the plan of salvation written in the heavenly scroll. Shah openly declares that this that, that is the foundation of our faith. However, we are following teachers who bring us under condemnation. 
to the letter of the law outside of its intent, which was the Yushai covenant, which which is what the Yushai covenant is all about. These teachers tell us everything has to be done just like this or just like that, and point us to the way of rabbinical Judaism does things, yet never tell us why these things are done. Which is the more important, me? These teachers are a dime a dozen, and they are. These are infant teachers teaching infants all feeding on milk. Nothing has changed in 2,000 years. We still do not have mature teachers teaching the spiritual law or the plan of salvation written in the heavenly scroll. Instead, we have immature teachers trying to look knowledgeable with all their impressive carnal, literal knowledge of the letter. We mistake these men as teachers when they are in much need of instruction as the rest of us in spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. Brothers, I could not address you as spiritually mature, but as worldly, immature, with a literal carnal approach to the spiritual law, as infants in the Yushayah covenant. I give you milk, not solid food, for you are not yet ready for solid food. In fact, you are still not ready, for you are still worldly, approaching the spiritual law from a literal mindset, putting a letter above intent, and totally missing the point. Right. In this chapter, my goal is to illustrate very simply where the feast cycle originated, originated and what the feast cycle is pointing to and rehearsing. So we can properly rehearse our role in these modium as the bride of the Messiah. The spring feast rehearsed the engagement and the fall feasts are the rehearsal of the wedding, all of which is based on the plan of salvation written in the stars. Simply amazing. We should approach our celebration of these modium from that standpoint. If we do not, if we do, not only will we please Yahuwah, we will mature from the milk of the word to the meat of it. In the process, we will fulfill the letter and properly prepare ourselves as the bride and have our candles lit when Yeshua returns to receive us unto himself. If we do not approach the heavenly wedding properly and rehearse as his bride, we will remain infants, feeding on milk of the word, never maturing in the intent of things. Year after year, we go through the motions, to the letter, just like ancient Israel had always done, causing them to miss the Messiah when he came to fulfill the heavenly scroll. They also killed him. The blind following the blind. As we come out of total paganism, Christianity, and realize that we are to keep the holy days of Yahuwah, we naturally look to Judaism for the answers. We do not realize, what we do not realize is Judaism is a Hellenized pagan religion as much as Christianity is. Hellenism, definition. The 20th century witness of a lively debate over the extent of Hellenization in the Levant and particularly among the, the ancient Palestinian Jews that has continued until today, the Judaism of the dysphoria was thought to have succumbed thoroughly to its influences. Boltman thus argued that Christianity arose almost completely within those Hellenistic confines and should be read against that background as opposed to a more traditional Palestinian Jewish background. Yes. We see that Judaism abandoned the heavenly scroll, never understood the meaning of his holy days, and failed to celebrate these important modium properly. If they did, they would never have killed Yeshua on Passover. Because that is exactly what the Messiah came to do, as foretold in the heavenly scroll. Killing Yeshua on Passover only proved he is the one prophesied in the heavenly scroll and prophets. Yahuwah's feasts are a mystery that is veiled in the letter and only revealed to, cho a, to the chosen few who mature in the meaning of these feasts. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 7 We speak Yahuwah's wisdom in a mystery the hidden wisdom, which Yahuwah predestined before the ages to our glory, in the heavenly school, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would have not have crucified the King of glory on Passover. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Mystery language alert. We see above that Shaul the Apostle mentions the mystery language and then speaks in this mystery language a parable and prophecy from the book of Isaiah.
We are going to dig deeper into the mystery of the ages that Isaiah spoke about in Isaiah 64, 4. Things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man. All that Yahuwah has prepared for those who love him. The plan of salvation spoken by Isaiah and referred by Shaul as a mystery or hidden wisdom is found in the spring and fall feasts of Yahuwah, which are based on the plan of salvation written in the heavenly scroll, as I will prove in this book. These feasts are literally the plan of salvation written in the stars, played out on earth each year. As we read 1 Corinthians 2, those who ruled at the time, the Pharisees who ruled the synagogues and Sadducees who ruled in the temple, did not understand the meaning of Yahuwah's holy days. Why then are we keeping those holy days in the way, in the same way and an example of the rabbinical Judaism? They do not know, nor did they then understand the meaning of these appointed times and had abandoned the heavenly scroll. Nothing has changed in rabbinical Judaism over the last 2,000 years. They have been doing it their way, and now we are doing it their way, and they are closer, they are no closer to seeing their Messiah. Crazy. The same human traditions are carried forward today in Judaism, as they continue in bondage to the letter, ever seeing but can never see, ever hearing but cannot hear, ever seeking but never understanding, as they continue in the literal ritualistic adherence to the letter outside of what these modium mean spiritually, in context of the plan of salvation. And we are the blind following the blind. Hebrew roots teachers right off the cliff. Creation is crying out the plan of salvation. We read in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2 7, that Shaw, the apostle, mentioned predestined before the ages of our glory. If we are going to unlock the mystery of these modium, we must begin there, before the ages. As Shaw indicated, we must journey back to the very beginning and search for our answers as to what the feast cycle is telling us. We are going back to the very beginning, before the Feast of Yahuwah were given orally to Adam, Moses, before they were written down in the detailed instructions in the Mosaic Covenant, back to creation. We must go back to day four of creation, because now, in the Yushaic Covenant, they have found their ultimate meaning spiritually, which was ordained before the foundation of the world, and predestined before the ages, as Shah stated, the heavenly scroll, written in the stars. We are going to unlock the secrets preserved in the heavens that Enoch spoke of and reveal the plan of salvation as Yeshua was portrayed as crucified in the heavenly scroll and given glory with Yahuwah as the coming king. Yahuwah literally gave Yeshua glory before the world was by witnessing of his coming king in the fabric of his creation. Yahuwah revealed his plan on day one when he said, let there be light, and then authored that plan into the stars on day four, and then fulfilled that plan on day on the fourth prophetic day, 4,000 years. I will prove this in detail and to illustrate this fact and show how Yeshua was ordained before the foundation of the world and how Yeshua was a lamb that has been slain. The stars literally cry out the coming king. They foretell of his role in the plan of salvation and lay out the annual wedding feast, which would later become the holy days of Yahuwah. The plan of salvation, the feast cycle foretold in the heavenly scroll. This is the heavenly scroll like un unwound. Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo. We'll go over this many times in this book series. So if you feel a little intimidated, do not worry or stress about it. By the time you read this series, you will understand this whole plan and this wheel. Shaw is speaking of Yahuwah's feast cycle, declared in 1 Corinthians 2, that the meaning of the feasts of Yahuwah were a mystery hidden and hidden wisdom. He clearly understood what many, even today, do not comprehend. He stated that no one of this age, until this is still the same age, ages are 2,000 years in duration, understood the true meaning of these modi, 
Shaw pointed us back to creation for the answer, declaring, Yahuwah predestined before the ages to our glory. What is Shaw referring to? What is it in creation that is crying out to us? And what is it saying? Is there a message embedded in the fabric of creation, designed by the Creator, that will give us insight into His appointed times and feasts? Yes, Romans 1, verse 19. Because that which is known about Yahuwah is evident within them. From For Yahuwah made it evident to them, writing His plan in, into the stars. Psalm 19. For since the creation of the world, He points out that creation is the original revelation that cries out. His invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen in the stars, being understood through what has been made, the heavenly scroll. Ezekiel. That message written in the stars was corrupted, and very few understand what that message is telling. That message is the foundation of the Torah, the feast, the prophets, and the reason Abraham attempted to sacrifice Isaac. It is the foundation of all pagan kings claimed to rule mankind, and the foundation of every prophet's proclamations concerning the Messiah. It is a divine clock that dictates the Sabbath, foretells the exact timing of the Messiah's two coming, and much more. The key to the feast cycle is found in the heavenly scroll as Yahuwah's word is preserved eternally in the heavens, or rather, the heavenly scroll. Heaven is a humanized word that robs us of the true meaning, that is pointed, pointing directly to the heavenly scroll. Shamian, heaven, every time you see the word heaven in the Bible, it's actually pointing to visible heaven, skies, where the stars, etc. are. Heaven should have been translated heavenly scroll in many places in the Bible. Almost every place, if you ask me. The Hebrew word is Shamian which is a direct reference to the stars, where the heavenly scroll stands eternally as Yahuwah's witness of Yeshua as the Messiah. Psalms 119.89 Your word, Yahuwah, is eternal. It stands firm, written in the heavenly scroll. It is in the heavenly scroll that Yeshua had glory with Yahuwah written into creation before the world was. This witness in the stars called the heavenly scroll foretells of the Messiah defeating the death through resurrection, and reigning as king eternally, as we will learn in this book. Next, I am going to demonstrate how key the heavenly scroll is to our faith, as every forefather, every prophet, the Messiah, and the messengers of the Yushe covenant all preach the heavenly scroll. But you have yet to hear one sermon do it. The heavenly scroll is the foundation of the earthly scroll. Scripture is ripe with references to the heavenly scroll as it is the vehicle by which Yahuwah revealed to mankind the coming branch and salvation and plan of salvation through a mediating high priest. Amos, Amos 5 8. Yahuwah, who made the Pleiades, the seven stars, Orion's bow, and Orion, Orion represents the Son of Man and the coming of the branch. Amos 9 6. Yahuwah builds his lofty place in the heavens, Maserat, heavenly scroll, and sets its foundation on the earth. The heavens and earth are intimately connected. What is portrayed in the heavens plays out on earth. King David, Psalm 19, verse 2. The heavens, the place, where the sky, place in the sky where the stars are located, i.e. the zodiac, are telling of the glory of Yahuwah. The glory of Yahuwah is Yeshua, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. And their expanse is declaring of the work of his hand. Day to day, the heavenly scroll pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Mystery language. Their signs of the zodiac constellations. Voice is not heard. Their line, zodiac means line or path of the sun, has gone out through and seen by all the earth. And their signs of the zodiac utterances to the end of the world. In them, the constellations, he has placed a tent for the sun, the zodiac, which is as bridegroom, Yeshua, coming out of his chamber. It rejoices as a strong man, human Messiah, to run his course of a wedding. Its rising is from one end of the heavens, zodiac, and its circuit, zodiac means circuit or path, to the other of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. Psalm 119.89 
Your word, Yahuwah, is eternal. It stands firm, written in the heavenly scroll. Moses, Deuteronomy 3.19 When you look up to the sky and see the sun, moon, and stars, speaking of the zodiac here, the whole heavenly creation, you must not be seduced to worship and serve them. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, has assigned them, the signs of the zodiac, to all the people of the world. They were created by Yahuwah to proclaim the coming Messiah, Yahusha. See, Psalm 19. They are not gods. I know some of this is repetitive, but it is for a good reason. Genesis 15.5 And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards the heaven, the zodiac, and see if you can tell what the stars proclaim. If thou be able to number them, read them in order. There are twelve. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be, Yeshua be. They tell the story of his life and role he plays in the plan of salvation. Job 38, 32. Yahuwah said to his upright servant, Can thou bring forth the Maseroth, the twelve signs of the zodiac, in their season? Job 9, 9. Yahuwah is the maker of the bear, Ursa Major, and Orion, the seven stars of Pelides, and the constellation of the south. The bear is the image of Ursa Major in the constellation Orion. I think it's a uh, a deacon, which is a smaller picture in the constellation. You'll learn more about that later. Enoch. Enoch is the one who was taken to heaven, or rather shown the meaning of the heavenly scroll, and drew the diagram that has been passed down to us today. Enoch has shown how the watchers perverted the meaning of the heavenly scroll into sun worship and magic and horoscopes. Enoch drew the heavenly scroll side image on the left, and that was passed down to future generations before lost when it was outlawed by the Pope and rabbinical Judaism. We're going to learn all those pictures in this series. Enoch, chapter 9, verse 6. Things and nothing can hide itself from thee. Thou seest what Azazel had done, who had taught all in righteousness on earth, and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in the heavenly scroll, which seven men were striving to learn. Enoch 35 3. I bless Yahuwah of glory, who had made those great splendid signs of the zodiac, that they might display the magnificence of his works, the plan of salvation, to the angels and to the souls of men, and that these splendid signs in the heavenly scroll might glorify all his works and operations, might see the effect of his power, might glorify the great labor of his hands, and bless him forever. Wow. Ezekiel 2 9 through 10. Then I looked into the heavens, and behold, a hand was extended to me, and lo, a scroll was in it, heavenly scroll. I will talk more about Ezekiel's vision later. The four wheels within a wheel that Ezekiel described and saw when he looked into the heavens was the Enoch Zodiac. I have produced an in-depth video on what Ezekiel witnessed, proving Yahuwah was showing Ezekiel and the heavenly scroll. It can be found on my YouTube channel. Search the Sabbath Covenant channel or go here. I'll have a link in that description box and um, I'll also be subscribed to that channel as well. I'm not going to play it just for the sake of time. We'll read it. Zechariah 5, two, verse 2 through 3. And he said to me, What do you see as you look into the heavens? And I answered, I see a flying scroll. Living creature holding the scroll has two sets of wings. Isaiah 34 4 And all the hosts of heaven, zodiac signs, constellations, hosts, stars, shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, i.e., the heavenly scroll. Isaiah 9 6 7 For to us a child is born, Virgo, to us a son of man is given, Orion, and the government shall be on his shoulders, Taurus. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Aquarius, the perfect image of Mighty God, Capricornus, Forefather of Everlasting, everlasting Life, Capricornus, and the Prince of Peace, Cancer. There will be no end to the increase of his government, or of peace, on the throne of David, and over his kingdom to establish it, Sagittarius, and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore, Leo. 
Wow, it's just amazing. Put it all in perspective. Isaiah went on to perfectly describe the Enoch Zodiac. Isaiah 6, 1 through 13. In that year, or in the year that good king Uzziah died, I saw in the heavens the Almighty sitting on a throne, the center of the Enoch Zodiac, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, the living creatures with two sets of wings sitting on the four corners of the Enoch Zodiac. Each one had six wings, with two it covered its face, and with two it covered its feet, and with two he it did fly, flying scroll, Zechariah of Zechariah. One cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahuwah of his host, of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, a futuristic vision of the Sabbath millennium. The foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice, sounds of thunders, of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. Isaiah 42, verse 5. This is what Yahuwah says, He who created the heavens and the stars and constellations, the zodiac, and stretched them out in order to proclaim a message, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to his people and life to those who walk on it. Starting to make sense now. Isaiah 46, verse 5. To whom will you compare me or count me equal? To whom will you liken me? that we may be compared. Remember this. Fix it in mind. Take it to heart. You rebels. Remember the former things of long ago at creation. I am Elohim and there is no other. I am Elohim and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, written in the heavenly scroll on day four of creation. From ancient times, creation. What is still to come, I say, my purpose, defined and written in the stars, will stand. And I will do all that I please. His will be done, honored, as it is proclaimed in heaven, written in the stars. Matthew 6.10 Isaiah 44, verse 24 This is what Yahuwah says, your Redeemer, who formed you in the womb. I am Yahuwah, the maker of all things, who stretches out the heavens, signs of the zodiac, along with the elliptic, to reveal a hidden message. Psalms 19 Who spreads out the earth by myself, Yeshua did not exist and was not co-creator. It was preeminent, but not pre-existing. Isaiah 45, verse 5. I am Yahuwah, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no Elohim. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, Yahuwah, do, these, do all these things. It is I who made the earth and created mankind upon it. My own hand stretched out the heavens. Signs of the zodiac along with the elliptic to reveal a hidden message. Psalms 19. I marshaled their starry horse. Host. Constellation signs which host stars. Yeshua did not exist and was not co-creator. The church tells you that. Teaches that. And it's blasphemy. Isaiah 48. Verse 11. For my own sake. For my own sake I will do it. For how could dishonor come to my name, Yahuwah? I will not give my glory as creator to another, not even Yeshua. Listen to me, O Yaakov, Jacob, and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the Alf. I am also the Tav, means unity and perfection. Yahuwah, not Yeshua. My hand is laid, the foundation of the earth. He alone is creator and did it all by himself. Isaiah 44:24. And my right hand has spanned off of the heavenly scroll. When I summon them together, the stars and the constellations conspire together to hold a secret message. They will minister together to proclaim the Messiah's plan of salvation. Psalm 19. All of you gather yourselves together and hear what the stars proclaim. Day after day, night after night. Who among them has foretold these things? Yahuwah has loved him, spoken of in the, in the heavenly scroll. Yeshua. He will do his pleasure on Babylon. And his arm will be on the tree. I, even I, have spoken, yes. I have called him Yeshua. I have brought him forth as the branch, as my eternal high priest. See Zechariah chapter 3. And this way, and his way, example of mikvah, circumcision, and offering, will succeed in pursuit, producing perfection and resurrection, called the way.
Wow, that was like the most important verse in this book. Right there. The whole Bible. John the Revelator. Revelation 6.14. The heavens. Masoros, Zodiac. Receded like a scroll being rolled up. Revelation 5. Verse 5. The opening of the scroll of the Masoros. Then I saw on a night in the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne, a scroll written on the front and on the back, a 3D scroll of heavenly pictographs, and sealed with seven seals, the seven visible wandering stars. We are seen as seals over the heavenly scroll. Also, the seven lampstand heavenly menorah. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. The throne in heaven after this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was Yahuwah, the Alpha, Tav, as it were of a loud chauffeur blast, talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I will show you the things which must, which must be after this. And immediately I was in the Spirit, seeing a vision of the heavenly scroll. And behold, in the stars a throne was set in the middle of the heavenly scroll, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there had an appearance as of a jasper and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow surrounding the throne, like the appearance of an emerald. And surrounding the, the throne were twenty-four seeds. And sitting on the seeds, I saw twenty-four elders, represented by the stars in the center of the zodiac, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thundering and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire, heavenly menorah, burning before the throne, which signify and represent the complete plan of Yahuwah, seven spirits, seven stars, and Pallades. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like crystal, blackness of space, or the firmament. And in the midst of the throne, and surrounding the throne, were four living creatures, full of eyes, before and behind, the signs, constellations. Wheel of Z equals vision, image to the left. And the first creature was like a lion, and the second creature was like a calf, and the third creature had a face as a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle, the four cardinal points of the Enoch zodiac to the left. And each of the four living creatures had six wings. They were full of eyes around and within, and they did not cease day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Father Yahuwah Almighty, who is, and is, and is to come. And then those creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to him who sat on the throne, to him, to him who lives forever and ever. The twenty-four elders, stars, fall down before him, who sat on the throne in the Enoch Zodiac. There are exactly twenty-four stars, and they are falling under the rainbow throne. The four beasts are seeing, seeing, Holy, 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 pictured on the previous page, and worship him who lives forever and ever, and bow with their kippet before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Yahuwah, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. I have produced an in-depth video on what John witnessed, proving Yahuwah was showing John the heavenly scroll. It can be found on my YouTube channel. Search the Sabbath Covenant channel or go here. Daniel 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions in his mind as he studied the heavenly scroll of the Enoch. As he lay on his bed, looking up at the stars and constellations, then he wrote down his dream. A revelation from Yahuwah. He was not asleep. He was wide awake, writing down his visions. Beginning the account of these matters, Daniel spoke and said, I saw the heavenly scroll in my vision by night, by night, because he was observing the stars not sleeping. And behold, the heavenly scroll, I beheld the Enoch zodiac until the four thrones were set in place. The four living creatures on the four outer rim of the Enoch zodiac that moved it about until they had moved the heavenly scroll in position. And the ancient of days, Yahuwah, did sit on the judgment seat, whose vesture was white as snow and the hair on his head was like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels, the throne is pictured on wheels because it is represented by the sun, which moves through the constellations as burning fire. See a wheel within a wheel within a wheel. Now does it make sense what Ezekiel was saying? 
It'll make more sense in a little bit. A fiery stream issued from his mouth and came forth before him. His words are like an all-consuming fire. Jeremiah 23, 29 and Hebrews 12, 29. Thousands upon thousands of stars in the heavens ministered to him, and ten thousand times ten thousands of stars stood before him. Daniel was looking at the heavenly scroll and all the stars in the heavens. The judgment seat was set, or rather the judge Yahuwah had taken his seat. The battle was about to begin between the Son of Man and the Son of Perdition. And the books the, of the heavenly scroll, there are three books, as I revealed in my book, Creation Cries Out, the Maserat, were open. I beheld the, the heavenly scroll. Then, because of the voice of the great words which is which the horn, Strong's, should be chauffeur, Yahuwah's voice sounds like a, lo a loud chauffeur blast. Hebrews 12, 19. Do not confuse this with the other horns in Daniel. This one is a musical instrument. The chauffeur spoke, I beheld what is written in the heavenly scroll. Until the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. Message behind the pictograph is Sagittarius. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their governments taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season at any time. Message behind the pictograph, Taurus. And I saw the night sky, visions of the heavenly scroll. Like I said, he was lying down at night. This is Daniel's vision. Looking at the stars, and behold, the constellation Orion. When, like the Son of Man, Orion came with the clouds of heaven, the Milky Way. The clouds of heaven is the Milky Way. And Yeshua and the beast came to the Ancient of Days, Yahuwah, who had taken his seat to judge between them. And they both were brought together before Yahuwah to, to declare who was the fulfillment of the heavenly scroll. The books have been opened. And there was given him the Son of Man, ruling authority and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples and nations and languages should obey him. His government is an everlasting government which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. Message behind the pictograph of Leo. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, within my body, and the visions of the heavenly scroll that passed through my mind as he studied the Enoch Zodiac trembled, troubled me. As he lay on his bed at night, looking up at the stars, he was not dreaming. He was writing these down as Yahuwah gave him understanding as he said in verse 1. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. What do these constellations mean? So he told me and revealed the interpretation of these things to me, revealed the meaning of behind the heavenly pictograph. Yahusha, Matthew 28, 20. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age of Pisces, when he returns in the age of Aquarius. Hebrews 10, 7. Then I said, Here I am, it is written about me in the heavenly scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. Matthew 6, 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth, as it is written in the heavenly scroll. John three twenty nine verse 29. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, speaking of the heavenly scroll. But the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. The stars cry out with a loud voice day after day, night after night, as a bridegroom coming out of his chambers in the heavenly scroll. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. Yeshua fulfilled the message contained in the heavenly scroll. John chapter 1. He is the fulfillment of the, the bar plan, predestined plan in the flesh. John 17, verse 5. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence, through resurrection, as promised in the heavenly scroll, with the glory I had with you written in the heavenly scroll before the world began. The light of Genesis 1 1, written into the stars on day 4 of creation, then fulfilled in Yeshua on the fourth prophetic day of, as the Debar plan was fulfilled in the flesh. John 1. In the beginning was the plan. Not the word, was the plan. The bar means plan. Matthew 11.25 At the time Yeshua answered and said, I thank you, O Father, King of the Heavenly Scroll, Shamian, the place where the stars are located, the Maserat, the Zodiac, and the earth, because you have hid these things, secrets preserved, from the wise and prudent, and have revealed them unto babies. Matthew 13.11 he replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven 
the heavenly scroll, the secrets preserved in the heavens, has been given to you, but not to them. 1 Peter 1.20 He was chosen, not created, before the creation of the world, as foretold in the heavenly scroll, but was revealed, manifested, born, created. In these last times, the debar or predestined plan, fulfilled in the flesh, John 1, for your sake, to fulfill the plan of salvation. Shaw, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Seeing it is Yahuwah that said, Light shall shine out of darkness, referring to day one of creation, when the light or the plan of salvation was revealed. Who, sh who shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge proclaimed by the stars, of the glory of Yahuwah in the face of Yeshua, the Messiah? 1 Corinthians 2. Shaw was speaking to former pagans who knew and abused the Zodiac. Verse 1. And so I was with you, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you in the testimony of Yahuwah about Yeshua written in the stars. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Yeshua the Messiah and him crucified before the foundation of the world, written in the stars before our very eyes. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words of human literal wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on literal human wisdom, but on Yahuwah's power in a mystery language. You do, however, speak a message of spiritual wisdom among the spiritually mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who viewed the zodiac as literally, and worshipped the signs of the sun, who were coming to nothing. No, we declare Yahuwah's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden in the heavenly scroll, and that Yahuwah destined for our glory before time began, written in the stars on day four of creation. None of the rulers of this age understood it, because it was corrupted by the watchers. Enoch 9, 6. Galatians 3, verse 6. You foolish Galatians! Who has bewitched you, twisting the zodiac into witchcraft? Before your very eyes, in the heavenly scroll, Yeshua the Messiah was clearly portrayed as crucified. Understand then, what is foretold in the stars, that those who have faith in the message contained in the stars are children of Abraham. Scripture, the word written in the heavens, foresaw that Yahuwah would justify the Gentiles by faith, and Yahuwah announced the gospel in advance to Abraham via the heavenly scroll. Genesis 15.5, saying, All nations will be blessed through you. Romans 10.17 Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about the Messiah. What word about Yeshua? But I ask, did they not hear what the stars proclaim night after night, day after day? Of course they did. Their voice, consolation, has gone out into all the earth. Their words concerning Yahu Yah Yahusha to the ends of the world. Shaw quotes Psalms 19. As we move ahead in this book, I will demonstrate exactly what is written in the heavenly scroll, how to read it, and its vital importance to our faith. The proof that Yeshua is the Messiah is that he fulfilled the heavenly scroll. And Yeshua is not Yahuwah in the flesh. There is no trinity. That is a pagan doctrine. Thank you for uh, being with me and we'll... See you on the next chapter.